So today we're going to be taking a look at one of the most affordable AIO CPU coolers on the market. It's the Cooler Master ML240 V2 RGB. For those of you who might be new to AIOs and liquid cooling, basically an AIO stands for an all-in-one liquid cooler. It means that you can just buy this and that's all you need to install. You don't need to get a separate water pump or water block or anything like that. It's all contained within the one unit. When you're looking at the AIO market for CPUs, it doesn't get much more affordable than this. I picked this one up for $99, but they're available as cheap as $89 online. And if you look at the list of the cheapest AIOs in order, this is the most affordable, reputable brand, dual fan AIO that you can buy. This model has a 240 millimeter radiator, which means it has two 120 mil fans. They are RGB fans, as well as the pump header itself has RGB too. So you might be wondering as well, why is it called V2? What's the difference between V1 and V2? Well, V1 came out back in 2018. It's an older model. Um, it looked a little bit different aesthetically. This one is a redesign, so it is more modern, as V2 would imply. Um, but this one actually came out in 2020. So even this one is three years old by now, but it's still a really good CPU cooler and still sells quite well. Plus it has support for the latest AM5 CPU sockets. So it's an actively supported um, piece of hardware by Cooler Master and it can be found easily online at most retailers. We're gonna be installing this into this computer here, which is currently running a stock Stealth Wraith, which came with my AMD CPU cooler. Um, this is my flagship high-end budget monster PC. If you wanna see another video on how I built this and its components, um, I'll leave a link in the description. But essentially, it's a 7900 XTX build with a 7600 uh, CPU, AM5 CPU. First impressions when I received this is I did think this is really nice packaging. It does feel quite premium, um, being the most affordable Cooler Master um, dual fan AIO. So there's definitely no disappointment in um, buying something on a budget here. You feel like you're really getting a nice premium product as well as it being a Cooler Master product, which is a very reputable brand. So I'm not feeling left out here at all. So we have some foam packaging, um, recyclable internal. Here we have the radiator and it has the pump block. So some of these AIOs come with paste already on the um, CPU cooler, on the pump header itself. Um, but uh, some of them you have to apply the thermal paste on your own. So I think this one comes with a thermal paste tube. This feels very premium. Uh, it's all steel with a nice uh, Cooler Master logo there. Um, on the CPU side, <laughs> be careful. I know it's stupid you have to say, but some people forget to re remove this plastic piece or they don't know that you're supposed to. Um, Cooler Master in this case have actually printed on the label itself that you must remove this. I've seen cases online where people just weren't aware of that and they ended up installing it with the plastic sleeving um, still on. Um, so on the um, exterior side, there is an RGB um, kind of shape element there. Uh, there's no Cooler Master logo. I think this is, uh, uh, this is preferable. The V1 actually had a Cooler Master logo there. Um, I think it looks more nice and minimalist without the logo. Here we have the two fans, the two 120 millimeter fans. Um, you can see they're white bladed fans because uh, they are RGB. Um, the interior, the internal circle of the fan is a kind of reflective um, sticker. I might remove that, I'm not sure. It just doesn't look that nice to be honest. Uh, the manual is in between those two fans. Here is a, oh, here's a user manual. So I don't know what that other piece of paperwork was, but I don't really care. And a bag, a baggie full of bits and pieces. And I can see um, some CPU thermal compound in there. I don't think these are for eating. I think those are for keeping the package fresh. So there are no snacks that come with your CPU cooler. All right, that's everything that's contained in the box. So let's go and install this thing.
So I've just spent about an hour installing this AIO and I think it looks brilliant. The combination of the dark metallic black finish and the solid LED um, RGB lights are really nice on this unit. Uh, and they, it looks really premium for being a, uh, you know, affordable um, version of a Cooler Master AIO. Really no complaints in that regard. Um, these things can be a bit tricky to install. Um, that's pretty typical for AIOs. It becomes even more tricky when they have RGB and you have to plug in the RGB headers and um, hook up fans to all sorts of things. This particular one uh, doesn't have any software control. Um, the RGB elements are controlled via a physical switch, which I've mounted inside the case. Um, I've adhered mine with some double-sided tape. Um, the trick with this switch is that one end of it goes to the fans and the other end goes to the power supply. So it's wise to mount it somewhere in between the fans and the, and the power supply so that you can have opposite ends of the cables running to opposite ends of the case. The two fans and the pump header are the three things which have RGB elements on them and they do have to be the same color at the same time. You can't switch combinations between the three units. Uh, that's a limitation of this specific piece of hardware. If you want to do something like that, go for the ARGB model instead. I think it's around the same price usually anyway, but just be careful because the model number is very similar. It's just ARGB instead of RGB. So keep an eye out for that. As for the lighting options, there's three or four different colors that you can toggle between. Um, I'll show you what those colors are now, but yeah, it's just those colors. So um, the RGB in this unit is not like a full spectrum rainbow. Um, it's, it's got pre-programmed colors built into it and you pick between those. You can also switch this unit between different lighting modes. So there's one that's just a solid light, there's one that's flashing, there's one that's cycling up and down. Um, so you can experiment with those as well. And one of them is actually kind of a rainbow mode, which will cycle between the different colors that are available. But for me personally, I just want to stick to one solid color. Personally, I find it distracting if your gaming PC is like switching between colors and flashing and all sorts of things when you're trying to frag your opponents. Aside from that, I found that the unit came with everything it needed for me to install it. It had thermal paste included, it had the AM5 bracket mounting, and all the cables, all the screws, there was nothing missing. I didn't have any trouble in that regard. So now let's take a look at some thermal results and noise levels and see how it actually performs in gaming. Kicking off with Cinebench R23, this test is designed to push the CPU to its limits by running the maximum load on all threads, all cores of the unit. What you want to keep your eyes on is the CPU frequency shown on the left in the orange graph and the current CPU temperature shown below it. This CPU is rated to boost up to 5.1 GHz on a single core, but its base clock is 3.8. So here what we can see is that not just a single core is boosting up to 4.8, but all cores are boosting up to 4.8. And it's maintaining a temperature of 87 to 88 degrees Celsius, which is well within the safe operating temperatures of this CPU. This test achieved a score of 13,323 in its multi-core mode. The Fermark CPU burner is an even more extreme CPU test than the last one. And here we can see the results of that. The CPU frequency is being pushed all the way to 4.9 GHz, close to its rated 5.1 GHz maximum. It's still remaining in a safe temperature zone, however, below 90 degrees. In a prolonged 5-minute test, the CPU frequency remained the same at 4.9, with the CPU temperature barely changing at all. Moving on from workflows and raw frequency numbers, the 3 d Mark Firestrike test is kind of an older one, but it's designed to more closely resemble gaming performance. What we're seeing here is the physics test, which is very CPU intensive, and we can see it boosting to 4.7 GHz. The next test coming up is the combined test. This combines GPU testing with CPU testing at the same time. And the good thing about this test is it actually gives you a score at the end, which you can compare with people with similar systems 
or differently spec systems as well online. I ran this test in a quiet CPU fan profile and it scored an 18,256, but on a normal profile, it scored 19,064. The highest frequency hit was 5,231 MHz, and the average core clock was 4,834 MHz during the entire test. This test also gives you a separate physics score result, which is different to the overall result, because it's only relevant to how the CPU itself performed and not the CPU and GPU combined. Comparing online against the vast number of other people who've run the same test with the same processor, so the average score is 27,783, and in this instance we scored a 27,434, which is very close to the average. This is to be expected, as we haven't overclocked the processor at all, which is something that most people running these tests typically do do. If you like this build and want to do something the same, it costs around $2,600 Australian for this complete build, and it is built for gaming. It's a 7900 XTX system and an AM5 CPU, so it's very high end, um, but I built it to be very affordable at the same time. I'll leave a link in, my, in the description of this video for the PC part picker list. Um, and that'll have all the exact components that have gone into this system here. You can also watch my previous video where I actually built this system and explained all the parts that have gone into it. And I'll leave a link to that video in the description as well. If you like this kind of content, leave me a message below and let me know what you'd like to see. I'm open to any ideas. If you did like the video, go ahead and leave a like, or you can subscribe because I have a lot more like this coming in the future.